Hi everybody and welcome to day 22. Now I'm going to keep this short and sweet. Uh, I did an interview uh, today that is just fantastic. I'm really excited about it. Um, it's going to last for the next three days and I'm going to call this one the big gig and it's going to be now the big gig part one, two, and three. Today I got to go over to uh, my buddy Stevie D's house and interview him uh, for uh, for my video diary here and I'm just so excited about it. For those of you out there who are drummers and you know who Stevie D is, well, you're in for a treat. For those of you who don't know who Stevie D is, you're in for a treat. We call this one the big gig for a reason and uh, I will let Stevie tell you who he played for. You guys are going to love this. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, getting some feedback on this one. As a personal note, Stevie, buddy, thank you so, so much uh, for inviting me over to your house and opening it up to me. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Thank you for doing this interview with me. And um, congratulations on all your success, my friend. It's very well deserved. And uh, anyway, for those of you who, uh, who don't know who Stevie is, watch, enjoy. See you in a few days. All right, everybody, here we are again. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. Um, today, I'm entitling this one, The Big Gig. I'm here with my buddy, Stevie D. Stevie, how are you, buddy? Good, man, how you doing? Good, thank you so much for having me over to your beautiful uh, home. Oh, man, this is awesome. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, The Big Gig, why did I entitle it The Big Gig? Well, for those of you who don't know who Stevie plays for, I'll let him tell you. Why don't you tell us a couple of the, the gigs that you do and, and some of the guys you play for? Uh, currently playing with David Gilmore, uh, the guitarist for Pink Floyd and the, the, vo the voice of Pink Floyd as well. Um, and I've worked with Crosby, Stills & Nash, Kenny Loggins, Don Felder, um, Paul Anka. Oh, um, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, gosh, a lot of different groups. Uh, Chris Robbins from... Chris Robinson from the Black Crows. Oh, yeah. I was in a band called New Earth Mud with him, which was really good. Um, and a lot of other great groups. Uh, a really great jazz uh, quartet called ESP. Mm -hmm. And actually, a little plug here, I just made a, my own jazz record, and uh, a lot of the guys in ESP are in the band, and I'm calling it Solar Flare. And I just recorded it and mixed it, and it's it's pretty cool. Is it is it out? Is it Not yet. I just finished mixing it. It's going into mastering probably today. And mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah, hopefully by August it'll be all ready. To and go. did you do it here in your No, studio? actually I did it at Simon Phillips studio called, oh, wow. called Phantom. And uh, guitarist Carl Verheyen's on it, and he uh, recommended a studio. So now I'm actually friends with Simon, and he he was really cool, and, and we recorded it there and mixed it there. And is, that a, is that up in the valley? Yeah, that's in Van, uh, Van Nuys. Oh, okay. So anyway, so those are a couple of gigs I've done over the years, and you know, it's been, it's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. Well, I would say those are pretty big gigs. That's 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 so cool, yeah, man. Thanks. Congratulations thanks. on all that. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess the first question um, that I would ask you is is what every drummer in the world probably would want to know, and that's what was your first one? What was the what was the first one that you did, and and how did you get the gig? How did you get like, hey, I want to. Have Stevie play for my me. very first gig. The, the very first gig with a with a with a name, name actor. With a name Actually, um, well, my first me my first tour was with an actress named Maria Conchita Alonso. She was a Venezuelan soap star and a film actress. She's in a couple movies. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. So I got the gig and we toured all over South America and through bullfighting arenas. Uh, Menudo opened for her. Oh, really? Yeah, no she kidding. was kind of like the Venezuelan Charo, <laughs> but she did. <laughs> so, I, that, so that was kind of my first tour, and that was pretty interesting. And I got that just from a referral. Um, so there was a band called Zot that was local, and somehow they got my name, and their drummer couldn't do it. And uh, they called me up and said, you want to do this tour? And I went, sure. So I pulled the keyboard player in, a friend of mine, Randy Gonzalez, and we went and did this gig. And that was about a year of really? worth of touring. Yeah. And, um, it was really interesting, interesting experience for a young guy. I think I was like 20, 21, 22 no years kidding. old. Yeah. No kidding. And then after that, um, played a lot around locally. I was in many groups. I just did anything I could as far as gigs and whoever would hire me to play. Right. From right, weddings right. to clubs to, you know, and I played with 
was trying to play with the best players I could. Yeah. Um, and then I uh, got a call from a trombone player named Andy Martin who um, uh, called me up and said, hey, uh, Paul Anka is looking for a new a drummer that dr his drummer's leaving. And, and I'm thinking, who's Paul Anka? <laughs> At the time, I didn't. I, I honestly, <laughs> sorry, Paul, but I didn't remember. I didn't know you were at the time. But um, anyway, uh, so next thing I know, I, um, music and and a, a plane ticket and uh, shark showed up at my door, and uh, I was out the next day. Flew to flew to Vegas, wow. went to the Golden Nugget, wow. where they have because Paul used to do two week stints at a showroom like uh, Desert Inn. He'd play in at uh, Caesars. He'd play, you know all those things, Atlantic City, Trump Plaza, all those things. So I went and auditioned, and luckily a band musical director uh, said, hey, would you want to go to Europe? And I said, sure. And <laughs> I, but, I, but I think that gig, I, I think one of the reasons I got that gig, to be honest with you, is because I play basketball. <laughs> which is funny, because we were just talking about that, that how tall we are. But <laughs> all the guys on the band play ball. And I was in a league with Andy, and they're like, we oh, need really? another guy. Like, no one else plays. So <laughs> we don't care about your drumming. drumming. <laughs> they don't care about the drumming. So <laughs> you can read or you can keep good time. Doesn't matter. But if you can hit a free throw, you get the gig. <laughs> I'm not. God is my witness. So, so <laughs> That's great. basically got on the on the band and, and was with Paul five years. Really? No yeah. Kidding. And I gotta say that was the best training I could have ever had. Oh, I bet. Because one thing Paul um, emphasized and really taught me was shaping dynamics yeah and he 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 knew every lighting cue he knew everybody's every note the horn players the other thing is most bands will change up their set list mm -hmm. and they'll say okay we're changing we're, we're going to add a new song tonight we're going to change the song order and paul would have five or six arrangements per tune so he oh, calls really and he'd do medley so you'd have to insert like you know that he had different arrangers like gordon goodwin and michelle colombier and um, Johnny Harris and Ohenu Toussaint. So he'd call at any time before the show, like right before the show, we're doing, you know, the arrangements, different arrangements every night, not just a set list. Really? Yeah. So the, really? The, the, wow. the, the book was this thick. And I got, fortunately, I got, I did the gig enough to where I kind of memorized all of it. Right. So when he called a tune, I just kind of make a mental note and different ending. Yeah. Different middle section, different With dynamic. A f but way different feels too. Some of the feels were different. Really? Like each, yeah. It, one might have been a swing. The other one might have been a Latin thing. The other thing was, wow. for me, was difficult at the time was playing very soft and at a medium tempo bossa, not doom to doom to doom or boom to but it's like boom, 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 boom. Doing that at a very soft volume, vamping for like 10 minutes while he's talking and also oh. hitting these little kicks and then you'd have to build it up so that kind of thing was just really good training for me and the, the all the horn players were made all the cats were great as a matter right. of fact a lot of the guys that were in the band with me today are, are very very established horn players um that like wayne bergeron and andy martin and they, they're on like all the picks up movies oh, wow. those cats are like the heavy cats so it was yeah. a really good for me at 23 years old yeah it was like you know but so that was my real first introduction into like the professional level of show. At that you know, age, so. like when you when you mm -hmm. went in at that age, was it? Uh, I mean, you were you know, 22 years old. Was was it intimidating? Was it ever like? Ugh, absolutely. Know. I mean, you know, I came up. I wasn't a great reader. I learned how to read, but I wasn't like a super great sight reader. And um, but I could read charts well enough, um, and I really rely on my ear. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it was intimidating just because of the of the players in the band were all so top notch, and plus a lot of the guys had been there, so they really knew the book. Mm -hmm. So for the drum, a new drummer to come in to to drive that band, it's like, you know, I really had a. So yeah, it took me it took me a couple of gigs to kind of get my legs. I remember my first gig with him was at the Waldorf Astoria in New York. Oh really? Yeah, and then we flew to Europe and we hit we hit the ground running and. Then, I'd say by about the fourth show, I felt pretty good. Right. And he actually kind of gave me the assurance, like, you know, you want this gig? You got it. You know, it's oh, like that's I, cool. it took me like four, for me personally. And so, if, you know, but every, that's the thing. There's always a learning curve. Oh, yeah. No matter yeah. what you're doing at any at any gig. Um, so that was pretty much my first, like I said, my first.
That's cool. That's that's awesome. now now from there, didn't you you went from there to Kenny Loggins? That was way later. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. After I, well, I mean, I, I can give you the you know history of my life here, but yeah, after Paul's gig, I decided to kind of get off the road. So I joined that. You just got burned out on it. I or? just felt like I there was so much more I wanted to do, and um, I didn't want to just keep doing that. Um, I there was so much more music I wanted to play. Right. You know, and also grow as a player. So I got off the road, and uh, and then I joined the jazz um, quartet ESP, and starved ever since. No. <laughs> <laughs> I became a jazz musician. I'm starving ever since. Yeah, and, uh, yeah I, I can tell by the pad here. Yeah, you're, oh, you're. <laughs> well. Anyway, um, but uh, and then I started doing more studio work, and I, I really tried to get my name out. So that was a really kind of a good move mm -hmm. because it kind of forced me to. You know, what are some of the records you played on? Uh, well, I joined Carl Verheyen's band. I did a lot of Christian albums. Cool. A lot of commercials. Um, I played with Bill. I played on a Bill Medley record. I, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, gosh, a lot of different things. Actually, I played on a Paul Anka record. Um, Kenny Loggins hired me to play on his record. Uh, different things for like ma mainly commercials at the time. Okay. So I was just kind of you know it was like in a lot of independent stuff, but it was really good to you know do that. So then after that, I, I, I got a chance to play with David Crosby, and that actually was the turning point. And uh, I did a session for him uh, through James Raymond, who was his son, and um, I did the session, and we recorded two tunes for the record, and then he just said, you know, be in the band. you got to be in the band. So I was with him for like seven years, and I'm really? actually still with him really? for all these years. Yeah, and then one thing led to another, and then I ended up working with Crosby Nash, and uh, that's how I got the David Gilmore gig. How did you, now? I, I know the story, but so the people that out there that don't, how did you get the how did you get the Gilmore? So, I was playing at the Royal Festival Hall with Crosby Nash, and uh, uh, I had no idea that certain people were in the audience, and I'm glad I didn't know. <laughs> um, but uh, the show went really well, and it was my first tour with Crosby Nash. Uh, I'd been touring with David Crosby and CPR for a long time, but. but but the two of them was my first tour, and it was great. Dean Parks was playing guitar, and James Raymond and Andrew Ford, great band. And uh, so anyway, played the show at that Thrill Festival Hall, and after the show, um, I kind of get tapped on the shoulder, and I turn around, and it's John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin, and he's, oh and my he's, God. And he's standing there, and he's, he says, it's great playing, mate, you know, from one, one rhythm section play to another. You know, at least that's how I, wow. how I remember. I want to yeah. remember that, but. <laughs> and then kind of the corner of my eye, I see David Gilmore standing over there. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is, wow. I'm yeah. really glad I didn't know they were there. Yeah, right, the show. right. But it was a really great show. It, it was one of the same kind of thing. It really clicked that night. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, you know, I, it was just luck of the draw. Right. And um, I do remember changing my drum heads out that night, like before the show. Yeah. And the drums sound really so good. So they sounded really good. They so you, you play better when yeah, they sound good. It you really, just do. You do. And it was, anyway, it was one of those things. While I was on that, so, while I was on that tour, um, I got an email from a friend saying, telling me that uh, Loggins and Messina were looking for a drummer for their reunion tour that summer. Oh, okay. And they had been looking at a lot of guys, and they're still trying to find the right fit. And I, so I said, okay, yeah, sure. I'll be back in the state. And so I came home. and set up an appointment and I went down there and played. Um, and after a call back, I ended up getting the gig, which was pretty lucky. And, and this, is, this is something that's, for me, I've only gotten maybe three gigs um, on auditions in my career. Really? Don't believe it or not. And they've all been referrals or they saw you playing. Exactly or, right, exactly really? right. So it was, I was like, I went into this thinking, eh, I'm probably not going to get it because I go, I, I auditioned for maybe ten different gigs and didn't get them. Right. You know. Right. And there's a lot of reasons you don't get a gig, and you know, and I think a lot of the reasons was you know not the right fit. You know, you can't be the right guy for everything right, you know, gig, or the right. right girl for everything. So, you know, um, I was pretty okay with that. Right. So I got the call back and I went and, and played again and the, and I got the luckily I got the job and then um, played the summer. During the summer, Crosby calls me up and says, uh, David Gilmore's trying to get a hold of you. And I'm thinking, come on, man. You know, cause, and we're always playing jokes on each other. And So uh, I ended up getting a hold of David, and um, sure enough, he said, I'm going to have a tour. And this is 
10 years ago, actually. Um, and I'm interested in having you play drums. Are you interested in doing the gig? I mean, it was just basically saw me play the one show. Right. So that was the case of no right. audition. Right. But, so, I mean, gosh. Good thing you changed your heads up. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 